do that. Man, I can do that. Hey everybody, how's it going? Ron Watson, Positive Vibe, host of Disc Dogger Weekly. This is episode 17 of the show, Disc Dog Throwing Essentials. We've got a ton of great throwing stuff. We have backhand, sidearm, overhand wrist flip, uh, push throw, grips and tips on those, as well as some basic disc throwing principles that are pretty sweet. We're in the process of revamping our Disc Dog Foundation class. This th throwing stuff is going right in there. The show is sponsored by Hero Disc USA and patrons of Positive Vibe. Thanks a bunch for your support. We wouldn't be doing this without you. To become a patron and support our work in the show, right down there, hook up with us. Is that about it, Eppie? I think that's it. All right, enjoy the show. Make it look so easy. Watch me. Everybody, how's it going? Ron Watson, Positive Vibe, host of Disc Dogger Weekly. I'd like to demonstrate some blind throws today. There's a law of resonant spins. Clockwise throws go clock. So you can see this when we go clockwise. We're going clockwise, you can see it. If I throw counter clock, you can't. Epi, here. Lie down. If you're going counter clock, you can see this, but you can't see that. I'm gonna demonstrate that on the field. I'll start out by throwing tosses that are visible to the dog. Makai, catch. House, catch. You can see that he can see that throw the whole way. House, catch. Easy. Yeah, I figured you'd miss that. I figured you'd miss that. You should probably slow down a little bit. Makai, catch. Yes, good man. House, catch. Good. Ouse, catch, you can see. He's got a good look at that. Right? Here comes a blind toss. Oh, I'll get him set out out front. Makai, catch. Ouse. House. House. Four hands form. It's a backhand, a sidearm, a push, and an overhand wrist flip. We're gonna get practice, we're gonna get target practice, we're gonna get clock and counter left and right practice, switching targets. Another thing that we're gonna focus on is loading that disc up. We're gonna load to the throw. We're gonna make sure that we're loaded for that throw. So I'll, I'll do a couple reps here. Let's do this real quick. Boom. Pow. Pow. Boom. Watch out. Pow. Boom. Pow. So the form is super simple. We'll just make a backhand switch, sidearm switch, push, switch, overhand wrist flip. Well, the forehand's form is set up to embrace the natural way that we're throwing. We're set up here for the backhand, switch, and then we'll go sidearm. Switch, load, oops, push throw, switch, load, overhand wrist flip. This is not a drill. The forehand's form is not a drill. It's not about doing the drill and getting to do it live later or getting through this and getting to do the real stuff later. This is the real stuff. A form 
is something that we care about and we explore. A drill is something we do so we can do the real stuff. So while you're doing this, just uh, pay attention to it and keep your focus where it needs to be and you'll get all kinds of stuff out of this simple form. It's an all-purpose form that has many applications. It can be worked for precision and accuracy to learn the throws, to learn the footwork between throws. I'll go ahead and show you a few of those things. All right, this time I'm gonna work on precision and accuracy. I'm gonna try and deliver both my backhand and my push throw to the number two, that's the one on the right. And I'm gonna deliver my sidearm and overhand wrist flip to the number one on the left. And I'm gonna try and hit those targets. So I'm gonna focus on precision and accuracy. Oh, come on, Ron. One of the most important things that you don't get from a normal throwing drill is being prepared. Being prepared is really hard out there. Your dog is running around. You need to be ready. The four hands form also gives you a really good opportunity to train being ready. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to simply do the form and I'm going to place my focus on passing the disc to my throwing position. So here I'm passing it to the backhand. Here I'm passing it to the sidearm. Here I'm passing it to the push. Here I'm passing to the overhand wrist flip. So each time I'm throwing, I'm loading that disc to where the throw happens. Moving that disc to that position. I can practice that very easily within this form. Boom. Pow. Boom. Pow. Whoops. Pow. Boom. Pow. Boom. Pow. Boom. Pow. Boom. Pow. All right, so this time I'm gonna go ahead, I think I'll focus on trying to get my body in position early. So I'll make the throw and I'll switch and then I'll load. And I'll switch and then I'll load. Switch, load, switch, load. Right, and so I'm really putting focus on getting prepared with my lower body for that throw. The best thing about this form is not that we're hitting targets. We're getting practice at our throws. It's the other stuff that comes along with it. All right, backhand throw. Easiest throw in Frisbee, right? It's absolutely wrong. It's the easiest throw in Frisbee to throw 100 yards, and that's what you do with discs. You throw them far. So if you take a look at all the mechanics within a proper backhand throw, the entire body's moving, and to make things worse, worse it's a left-handed baseball swing. It's not fair, right? Take a look at a sidearm throw, uh, an overhand wrist flip. It's a little push throw, okay? There's no body mechanics in there that resemble this at all. It's actually the most complex throw to make. So those of you guys who struggled with that, hey, welcome to the club. The backhand throw is not a circle. It's not a circle. We're gonna start back here and we're gonna pull down the line to the target. If we're starting in here somewhere, a lot of, a lot of short floaters are popped right from there. Still a straight line. If we're throwing further, we're gonna reach back down the line, pull up the line. Funny. We wanna go from point A to point B. Point A, point B. Point A, point B. Point A, point B. Super simple. So the grip on the backhand, I like to use something like a fan grip for everything but distance. It's essentially 
loose fingers loose fingers gripping between my thumb and index finger and then the pinky or the ring finger is kind of touching the rim to hold it stationary and stable it's a comfortable grip i don't like to talk about grip too much on this unless it's a critical error what you don't want to do is you don't want to be holding in the center of the disc between your your index finger and your i'm sorry your middle finger and your thumb you don't really want to hold it there you want to hold it more between your thumb and your index finger that's going to give you a little bit more control over the wing rather than the disc itself so the further you throw the tighter your grip gets so my grip is going to get super super tight and small i might even pull the pinky off it's called a berkeley power grip when i'm throwing far and i'm going to pinch really hard between the thumb and the index finger and grip it really tight and that's going to allow this to rip out of my hands very cleanly for shorter throws more controlled throws we want a looser grip that gets more on the flight plate of the disc and that's going to give us more control over the wing grip between here thumb and index finger real tight at the, at the edge on the wing or a little further back for more controlled purposes so to make the disc spin there's not really you don't really flick your disc and flick your wrist in frisbee i mean that's all you can do. It's not a lot of power there. The wrist is actually flopped when the arm stops. There are a couple ways that I can stop my arm. If I'm throwing far, I can clunk it out there, throw it all the way out to the end there. And then my wrist, if it stays loose, has no choice but to flick that disc, right? Boom, that's how I'm gonna throw far. I'm gonna clunk it out there clunk it out there clunk it and that clunk is going to make the disc spin i can also make the disc spin by snapping or popping my arm getting my arm going a little bit and stopping it early real sharp stop you can see that wrist flick you can probably hear it on the mic right boom and that's how I'm gonna throw my short floaters. I'm gonna pop it out there and stop the arm with a loose wrist. So again, you don't really flick your wrist in the backhand throw. It is flicked for you when the arm stops. Big distance, it'll clunk and fall out of your arm later when the arm is all the way straight with the loose wrist. If we're throwing shorter or we want to throw floaters, be precise, we'll artificially stop the, the arm early and snap it or pop it at the target. And that's another way we generate spin. So we want to be able to exercise hyzer and anhyzer. Hyzer is like the skip side or the fade side. Anhyzer is the roll side. So we have skip and roll. Video is like up over there somewhere. Good video. So um, I can hyzer it to two, go and hyzer to one. Oh, come on, Ron. Hyzer it to two, and hyzer to one. Hyzer it to two, and hyzer it to one. All right, hyzer and hyzer, super important to have control over so that you can fix issues and throw flat. So good exercise is hyzer, anhyzer, flat. Hyzer, anhyzer, flat. It's a good exercise. All right, in addition to hyzer and anhyzer, we have a principle in disc sports called mung. The disc is flat. If it's here going this way, that's mung. That's how we set up big floaters um, and how we throw air bounces. So I'm going to try and throw a couple with mung. I'm throwing downwind here. It's going to be a little difficult, but I'll give it a shot. 
So on this camera here, you should see the disc like this. On this camera, you should see the bottom of that disc rather than the wing. It's also how we throw an air bounce. To put Mung on the disc, you'll finish looking at your knuckles. So you'll make the throw, you'll finish, and you'll look at your knuckles. I'll demonstrate one more round. Look at your knuckles. Look at your knuckles. Look at your knuckles. That'll turn the wing up, help you establish and put Mung on there. All right, there you go, backhand throw. Thanks a bunch. If you have any questions, feel free, comments below, like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Hope you dug it. All right, sidearm. So we're gonna load the sidearm. Sidearm is thrown to the left of the body. It's thrown counterclock, it spins counterclock. And we're gonna load, I like to load upside down, load it up, peace sign, pop and pull back. Peace sign, pop and pull back. Just a tiny little pop, super small. Sidearm throws go to the left. It's a counterclock throw. If I'm throwing it, I'm throwing it to my left. So I'm gonna try and hit the number one target here. Also, I like to pass it to the peace sign. So we catch it low, make a peace sign, Turn it outside, elbow on the hip, let it droop, pop and pull back. Catch low, peace sign, outside, pop and pull back. It's a tiny little toss, right? You don't do anything with your arm. If you're doing this stuff, you're throwing a roller. It's just a catch it low, peace sign, little tiny pop. We can turn it upside down to catch it low, get ready, peace sign, pop. Catch it low, peace sign, let it droop, pop. If it gets it all flat or up, you're probably gonna throw a roller. The grip on this throw, the peace sign, the middle finger goes up against the rim. The index finger goes out into the center of the disc. The shorter you throw it, for the most part, the more that finger is gonna get out to the center of the disc. The longer you throw it, the longer you throw it, the tighter your fingers are gonna to be together. So that would be like a distance grip. All right, so I'll pass it over here. Peace sign, let it droop, little tiny pop. Here, boom, little tiny pop. Boom, little tiny pop. Just like the backhand throw, the sidearm throw isn't flicked. The arm stops and the flick happens. So I get my arm moving stop my arm and the flick happens. So you don't flick it per se. You get the arm going, stop the arm, and the disc flicks off. Again, this throw, it spins counterclock. So it spins that way. It means it's gonna go that way. It's gonna go to the left. I'll put my left foot forward, let that droop, pop. The arm going, stop the arm, pop it off. It's super, super small. It's a little pop or a snap. There's nothing to it, guys. If you're throwing it like this, it's gonna roll on you. All right, so like all throws, there's a hyzer and anhyzer, a skip and roll side on a sidearm throw. This would be hyzer. And that would be Anheuser, this'll skip, that'll roll. I'm gonna go Heiser to one, Anheuser to two, straight to three. This is super important for you guys who have trouble controlling the angle on your sidearm. You need to be able to hit Heiser, Anheuser, and straight at will. Heiser, Anheuser, oh, we'll call it, that's criteria. Criteria met, and straight. If you can do all three, you can make corrections on the fly. That's super important. All right, sidearm, catch low, peace sign, pop and pull back. Little tiny bit of flick goes a long way.
Don't have to do much with it. There we go. All right. Sidearm. If you have any questions, hit me up below. Hit us up on Patreon. Yeah, that's it. Sidearm. Woohoo. All right. I'm going to show you guys a funky little throw that's part of our four hands form. I call it a push. You just catch it high, fingers on top, turn it inside and pull. Catch it high, fingers are on top, turn it inside to your left shoulder, pull, boom, pow, boom, pow. Again, you catch it high, you turn it inside, pull. High, inside, pull. It's super funky, it doesn't spin a lot, it's okay. It's just a cool throw that's easy to put together at a short distance. So the grip, the further I get to the front, the more it becomes a fastball. So if I'm in the back, it, uh, you don't push Frisbees. This isn't going to fly. Okay. If I'm in the center, the disc is going to come out slow and dead. So I can barely get there, Ron. If I get closer to the front, the disc will come out faster and sharper, like a fastball. So from here, it's really going to go fast out of my hand. Compare that with this one here that's in the center and how dead that one is. I really like that kind of dead feel on that throw. I think it looks good, so I like to do that one. So the further you cheat to the front, the faster and sharper it comes out of your hand, the easier it is to spin. The thumb underneath is just doing, you know, like a grab thing there, kind of in the center. I don't really want it there. That winds up being like a staker. You can check that video out up there. The fastball kind of pull is almost like a staker too. Comes out real sharp and fast. I don't want it to come out like that. I want to work in about the middle of the disc, maybe cheating a hair to the front. See, it's a hair to the front. Pull. And it doesn't spin a lot. It's going to wobble. That's okay. You'll get better at it. Again, the arm gets going. The arm stops. The wrist keeps going. That's where the flick comes from in this throw. Super important concept. Loose wrists, flick discs. The arm gets to the front. If the wrist is loose, you can see how much snap that hand has. So I'm gonna hold this and let it come out loosely. Let that arm stop and the wrist continue. And that's going to give me a lot of spin on it. You can also kind of throw it a little bit like a floater, really pop it out there if you get creative with it. If you're having trouble getting this to spin, a really easy way to make it spin well is to throw it behind you. That body is flick thing here. When it gets there, it just like completely takes off. So you can throw this really far going behind you. It's got a real nice, clean release and trajectory, super easy to control, and it'll go 30, 40 yards. No, no, no problem at all. It'll also help you get a feel for that snapping and that body is flick. You can check out body is flick up there. All right, so the push throw is a clockwise throw. It spins clockwise, right? It's uh, essentially an upside down backhand not much different except for your hand is upside down. So I catch it high, turn it inside, and I pull. So I'm going to throw to the two here. That one. Inside, throw it to the two. That's where the clockwise throws go. To that side. Right, right there. Yeah. Boom. I don't want it to drift off. I wish we had a camera on that. It like was dying. All right, there we go with the push throw, another throw from the four hands form. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to hit me up. Comments below, hit us up on Patreon. However, hope you dug it. All right, overhand wrist flip. Overhand wrist flip. We catch it high, turn it outside, finger on the rim, pull. Catch it high, that means the fingers are on top. We'll turn it outside of our body, put our finger on the rim, pull. Nothing else, 
catch it high, outside, finger, pull. If you do just that, you'll be able to throw it 10 yards right now. Catch it high, outside, finger, pull. Catch high, outside, finger, pull. Don't look at it, don't do nothing. High, outside, finger, pull. All right, so the overhand wrist flip is a counterclock throw. It spins counterclockwise. That counterclock rotation means it's gonna be thrown to our left. Where it's facing 12 o'clock, you're 12 o'clock. That's counterclock, that's clock. Counterclock spinning throws, clockwise spinning throws. So we'll catch it high, turn it outside, finger on the rim. You'll notice that I turned so I can throw it over here to my left. And I'll throw that to one. So I'll catch it high, turn it outside, finger on the rim, pull to one. Now, just because I'm catching high, doesn't mean I'm throwing high. You don't have to throw from up here. You can throw from a comfortable place. I like to turn it upside down beforehand and then turn it outside, finger on the rim, pull it to one. Boom, pow, boom, pow, boom, pow. Super simple, there you go. All right, so grip. We've caught it high. We turn it outside. You can see that my hand's just on the top of the disc. I'm gonna put my finger right there on the rim. Got my thumb, squeezing between my thumb and my middle finger, index finger on the rim. So I'll catch it high, turn it outside, finger on the rim, and I'll pull to the target. And just like the other, the other throws, I'm not flicking it up there. I'm not doing this dramatic flicky thing up there. I'm getting the arm going and I'm stopping the arm. That stopping of the arm is what's gonna make the wrist flick and the disc spin. So I'm getting, catch it high, outside, finger, boom. And if I stop the arm nice and sharp and just let it go, it flies beautifully. Okay, so we catch it high, outside finger, pull. Outside finger, pull. Outside finger, pull. There we go. All right, loading up the discs. I'm gonna turn this upside down so I can catch it high. I'm gonna actually turn my discs to that. This might be a bit much for some of you don't worry about it. Do the four hands form. It's a good thing. You'll get better at it. And turn it upside down and we can grab from the bottom here. And now I'm loaded up with my finger on the rim. I could just make the pull from the shoulder. Boom. I want to pass my discs to where I'm going to make the throw from. And that's going to make my disc handling super efficient and pretty. So there's a Heiser and Anheuser, a skip and roll side on the overhand wrist flip as well. I'm gonna throw Heiser to the two. And I'm gonna throw Anheuser to the one. I'm gonna throw Heiser to the two. Anheuser to the one. Heiser to the two. Anheuser to the one. If you can throw Anheuser and Heiser at will, you can fix any wobbly or poorly articulated curve throws. You can fix your throw by yourself at will. Super important. Last thing, this is a bit of a finicky throw. The, um, a lot of times you might throw it and it might Heiser out. It'll fall off to the right, like it just doesn't have the mustard to get there. Uh, you can make sure that you deliver the throw real well towards the target, right? So if I deliver it real well towards one, it's sure to get there. I want to make sure that I deliver forward before I stop the arm. And that forward momentum, super key in this. If you don't do that, you'll throw it high or it'll hyzer out before the target. I want to make sure that you're throwing far, you deliver to the target you deliver to the target. All right, overhand wrist flip. Think we've covered it. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up below in comments or hook up with us on Patreon. We really could use this support. It would be awesome to have you over there, special goodies and whatnot. But um, hit me up. I'll be happy to talk about it, add some stuff if you think something's missing. Awesome. Hey, everybody.
everybody, how's it going? Ron Watson, Positive Vibe, host of Disc Dogger Weekly. I'm gonna do some throwing forms. I'm gonna do the four hands form, the eight hands form, and the 12 hands form. The four hands form is the white belt throwing form. It consists of a backhand, a sidearm, a push throw, and an overhand wrist flip. The eight hands form is the yellow belt. 12 hands form is the green belt throwing form and those are throws of my choosing. I'll show you them as they come up. All right, here we go. Four hands form. We have a backhand, sidearm, push, come on, run, overhand wrist flip. Super simple, that's it, four throws. Eight hands form, yellow belt. Four throws of my choosing, two clock, two counter. I've chosen push air bounce, flamingo throw, air bounce, like over the shoulder air bounce, and then a trick I call a magic sidearm. So, and again, these forms, these forms are about the transition between the throws and about figuring out how to adjust my body between throws in order to hit my target. All the clockwise throws are gonna be thrown at two. All the counterclock throws are gonna be thrown at one. All right, here we go. Boom. <laughs> Pow, that one's always tough to start. Boom. Pow. All right, whew, push air bounce. Oh, that reach from the push air bounce to the flamingo throw is really something else. I'll try and get her done here. Boom. Boom. Going to one. Nice try, Ron. Nice try. Boom. Pow. Boom. Boom. Pow. Boom. Come on, run. Pow. A couple of weeks ago, I laid out a 12 hands form. I've decided to do my green belt form as upside down throws. So I have a backhand, thumber, little push staker, and an overhand wrist flip. It's a little bit funky. It's hard to re remember the upside down nature of these throws. So it might take me a couple to get it together. So go upside down backhand to two. Thumber to one, staker to two, overhand wrist flip to one. Getting these throws loaded properly is a real important part of throwing. It's the part that's gonna screw up your zigzag or get you in trouble when you're flowing on the field. So the four, eight, 12, or the X hands forms allow you to work on those skills and get a real good feeling for how these things work. Again, these upside down throws are really giving me some trouble getting them together. In particular, this one, that overhand wrist flip. So I'm gonna work this a bunch until that transfer becomes natural and well understood. Feeling pretty good. Right now I'm really focused on getting the grip, on loading the disc and being prepared for the next throw. I'm gonna try one or two more of those and then I'm gonna try and shift my focus to precision and accuracy.
Now I'm going to work on precision and accuracy. I'm going to throw my clockwise throws to two, my counterclock throws to one. Take that one. It's a good one to quit. Ron Watson, Positive Vibe host of Disc Dogger Weekly. Gonna show some grips here and I'm gonna demonstrate why grip is a convenient patsy. While grip is important, it isn't the most important thing. It's far more important for the action of the throw to be proper. I'll show you that right now. All right, I'm gonna start out with an overhand wrist flip grip. You can see that this grip is terrible right it's not at all what we should be seeing i got my knuckles all wrapped up on top here's the normal grip right this is what a proper grip should look like i'm gonna hold it like this which nobody would ever do but because i have the action solid the disc is gonna fly quite well throw it to two Right, disc flies quite well. The backhand throw, I can do the same thing with a backhand. I can hold this crazy town grip, right? And wind up with a nice throw just because, oops, the action is solid, right? All right, now I'll take a sidearm grip and I'll hold it super funky. Look at that. Uh, it seems to fly pretty well. Right? Is it as good as a um, regular throw? No. Right? But that grip is not ruining the throw. Why is this working? It's working because I have the action of the throw working properly. Throws go from point A to point B. They're straight lines. At the end of the throw, my wrist is loose. So my wrist flicks because of the stopping of that arm. If I'm throwing in a circle, there is no stopping of the arm, right? Straight line, stopping of the arm. Throw a couple properly. There you go. So, grip is a convenient patsy. It probably isn't your problem. I never address it in instruction unless it's a critical error. Again, the action is far more important. The fact that the disc starts from point A and goes to point B. The arm stopping is the key aspect to this. If you guys want to catch more on grips and the action of throwing a Frisbee, there's a Disc Dog Essential playlist that was in a card earlier and also will be coming right up. Check it out. Hey everybody, Ron Watson, Positive Vibe. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit on how to hold, carry, and manage discs. What we wanna do is we wanna hold all the discs that we can in the left hand and you'll grab from the bottom. You'll always grab from the bottom. All right. Here's something I learned at Yachi Camp. 
Uh, you'll pick up the discs in your left hand, or I'm sorry, you'll hold the disc in your left hand upside down, and you'll crack each disc with your right hand into that left hand upside down, and you'll have this nice, beautiful fan. Grab from the bottom, from the bottom, from the bottom, from the bottom, from the bottom. Left hand, crack them up in there, Oops. squeeze them nice and tight. Left hand holds, right hand gathers. Oh, there we go. Again, nice. Beautiful fan. Show that to you here. Beautiful fan discs. Another thing I picked up from Yachi Camp, you want to bring your off hand to your throwing hand, essentially to the throwing position. So if I'm throwing out there, I'm gonna bring that to the throwing position. To the throwing position. To the throwing position. To the throwing position. Getting the disc to the throwing position, you'll swing to the right hand. You don't want to reach over here. So you'll swing to the right hand. You can also turn this upside down for the overhand wrist flip. Upside down on the way over. You can turn it upside down for the side arm. You can turn it upside down for that push throw. Upside down, you want to turn the discs in your left hand and put them in your right hand in the grip. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast, okay? Don't rush when you pick up your discs. You wanna be nice and slow and methodical. That will actually make you faster. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. The only time you're allowed to be nervous is when you have less than three discs in your hand. Otherwise, you're good, you're cool.